Alright. So. Soak these about a half an hour or 20 minutes. And one strand is usually about 10 feet, so we're just going to take one out and put the rest back in the water. I'm going to talk in between Jerry chiseling out a mortise in his seats. On the first course, we're going front to back. <clears throat> You'll need caning pegs and just put about four inches through in the corner hole, top left, and peg it. And then we're going to come over on the bottom rail. One, two, four. Four, four. And go down. Don't pull too tight. This should sag down to the bottom of the seat frame. And keep everything nice and flat as you work underneath. And push up right next to where you went down. Over to your right. Now we're going to go down in the hole that's next to our peg. Remember that there's a shiny side and a not shiny side, and you want the shiny side up. It's pretty easy to tell which is the correct side to have up if you look at it. Okay. You're just going to work your way across. I'll do about two more, and then I'll shut it off and show you how you transition when you run out of cane. way across and stop okay not enough cane to make it back up this hole and down here so we take a new piece and put it right down there and peg it okay and what you'll see on the back is that you have two pieces like this usually about four inches and then that can be tied which I'll show you now but I usually wait till the end to tie them off so you just take the two pieces like that and tie and we'll snip those off after a while now I'm just back to the pattern So I've gone all the way across on the long pieces, and we have to fill in not every hole on this side, but a few back and forth on the short pieces. So we take this and flip it, and what's long here and here, we're going to snip. Snip that. Tie 
this in a double knot even. But you don't have to. I'm just going to leave it a single for now. Always good to do this while it's still wet. It's not very pliable when it isn't. Short pieces we can't reuse, but we might use these medium sized cutoffs. So the back should look something like that, where you have a loop across, looks like a stitch kind of. Try to usually leave about four inches sticking out to tie to. As long as it's not tied, it should have a peg on it on the other side. And once it is tied, you can pull the peg out. Okay, and these are tied. Now I need to fill in the sides. So I'm going to take a, a strand from here to here, and then one strand from here to here. This one is six holes down. It's the sixth hole on this rail, and this is the sixth hole up on this rail. Don't count the one on the other rail. So we're going to put a peg on each of those. Now because I'm coming over one hole, I can keep using this strand. This short piece will go right here. One, two, three, four, five, six from the bottom hole on the rail. Okay, and we're gonna peg that and do the same thing on the other side. Yep. And we're ready for the second course of cane. Nothing too mysterious about this one, just side to side, starting on the top left. I've already put a peg in it left about four inches hanging down here, which I'll be able to tie to my former one. Go over here, drop it down, and then come up in the hole beneath it. And all we're doing is laying them side to side over the top of the first course. Remember to keep in mind that your cane is shiny side up, and that your loops on the back are flat. And back and forth you go. And there's no short pieces to fill in here. Just go all the way down the sides till all the holes have cane in them. I'll do a couple courses here. It is very easy. <laughs> Especially one, two, three, and four. I wish these joints were my friends and better friends than they are. Well, see, this this caning will be a de-stressing activity from having to make mortise and tenon joints. So on and so forth till we get to the bottom, and then I'll flip it over and show the back side in a second here. Okay, and this last two going side to side. I'll show you kind of how we transition at the end. Courses and you want it to be a little loose. I mean, fairly loose. Like, don't pull tight at all, no matter how tempting it is. <laughs> okay. So wherever there's a couple of these sticking up next to each other, I'm going to go ahead and tie them. Fit? Thank you. 
Next one is very easy. You just follow exactly the same place as you did your first row, back and forth, but place your strand just to the right of your other ones. Okay, we're gonna start the third course here. And if I take a break or walk away from this, um, and I know I'm coming back in an hour or so, I will keep it damp by putting a wet rag on it. Um, if, it let, if you wanna let it dry out because you're going away for the week or whatever, you just wanna kind of spray it with a water bottle or something to rehydrate it, and then just same thing, let a towel or something sit on it for 20 minutes to half an hour to make these more pliable again. So now we're ready to start our third course. And the third course or third step is just like the first one. You're gonna go from front to back or back to front, um, but we're gonna start on the opposite side. <clears throat> kind of trying to lay this piece of cane just to the right side of the cane that it's running on top of. So you're on top of your, we'll call them horizontal, and these are vertical. So we're on top of the horizontal ones from our last step. I'm gonna drop about four inches of cane down that hole, peg it, and then we're gonna start by going right back down that hole. Oh, we're all tied up here. So when you need to go down into a hole where there's a peg, it is fine to remove the peg and insert your cane. As it turns out, you're going to end up putting several layers of cane down through each hole. So we'll just remove that because we're following this bottom one underneath here. We're following that one. So I'm gonna go down inside of that hole we want. <clears throat> okay. Now even though these look like they're not, they are parallel, but we're just to the right side of that piece of cane. It doesn't make sense right now why you need to do that, but and it won't always be easy to see which one is laying to the right, but trust me, it will come out later that you'll be glad you tried to make the effort of these to have one on one side and one on the other. to the right a little bit. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm trying to keep this new strand to the right of the one that's below it, directly below it. Okay, and I'm just going to continue on across, and I'll fill in these short pieces the same way that I did on the first pass. All right, we have finished the first, second, and third course. The first one, of course, went forward to back. The second one went side to side. And the third one went forward to back, staying just to the right of our step one. And it won't look like you're staying just to the right. It'll probably look like you're laying right on top. But try the best you can to get that top, top cane, step three, to the right. 
and then we're ready to begin step four and you're actually going to do some weaving when you get to this step so I'm going to try to zoom in just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about we're going to start we're going to follow this same horizontal that you did in step two okay but we're going to weave and so starting in this hole like you did when you did the top row here you're going to go over and under the ones that go from front to back over under over under and you'll know that it's right if you're making a weave okay so I'm going over the one that is supposed to be on top and under the one that's on the very bottom over the one on top under the one that's on the bottom over the one on top over the one under the one on the bottom if you can't tell for sure which one was supposed to be to the right just remember that you have to be on top of the one that is up on the top of your course, your third course. Now I'm using this stick just to show you so that you can see that if you do it wrong and you try to weave under the top one and over the underside one, what's happening? Nothing, you're not weaving at all. You're just slipping in between these. You've got nothing anchoring you. So you can't really do it wrong. Okay, over the top cane, under the very bottom cane, over the top cane, under the very bottom cane, and so on and so forth. And then you can pull those together and kind of straighten as you go. So I'll show you how those go for a couple, couple of courses. Underneath, kind of looks like this, some dangling, tied off where we can, and it's okay if those dangle. When we find another short piece that's nearby, we will tie those off as well. So. Here we go with step four. Okay. So we're gonna put a, about four inches down in there. I would put a peg, but my holes are a little small. Let's see if I can get one in. Nope, I should have made bigger holes. Yours will be bigger. Let's go. Just one or two passes so you can get the feel for it. Okay, keeping the shiny side of the cane up. We're gonna go under, over, under, over. I'm trying not to stand with my head in front of me. Oh, and you wanna stay in front of this horizontal. So I'm calling these vertical and these horizontal. You wanna stay on this side of the horizontal one. Okay, so we're gonna go, you don't wanna go up here. You don't wanna be here, you wanna be under. So if you're sitting on this side, like I was, your layer that's going this way will always be in front of the second of step two. Okay, so weaving in front of step two, we're gonna go over, under, sometimes you kinda spread them apart so you can see them. Over, under, and you only wanna do probably, oh, half a dozen before you go ahead and pull it all the way through. Okay, now I'm gonna pull it all the way through and check that I didn't mess up somewhere. That way if you do make a mistake, you don't have to pull out everything, you can just pull out four or five at a time. And don't let it roll on you as you're pulling through because that can break it. Try to get it all straightened out how you want it to be before you finish pulling it through. Now, it's gonna look a little messy until we get a few of these going. But this new piece always lays in front of the side to side and weaves over the vertical and under. Over the vertical and under. Over the vertical and under. Over and under. And if you do it wrong, and you, so this is my right one and this is my left one. If I try to do over and under, it's wrong. You can tell right away that it's wrong. So don't worry that you're not getting it right. If it's not weaving, it's not right. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pull that one now. Okay. 
So basically what you want to visually, by the time you get about halfway done, is a checkerboard sort of pattern. And we're keeping this hole, these two will be together, these two, okay? And as you work, you can kind of shuffle these cane around so that you can see what's what. Because as you can see, it's kind of a mess until we start weaving. But as soon as you weave back and forth a couple times, you're going to see that this pattern will really start to make sense. And I literally did it wrong on the last step because I was trying to show you. <laughs> so you see I went over the right and under the left. And then I went under the left and over the right. These two should never be able to cross each other. So I'm going to pull that back out. I'm going to need to pull this out right here to weave it correctly. See, now that you've seen I can make a mistake, you won't feel bad when you do it. Everybody does it. Okay, so this one's on top, so I need to be over it and then under. And then over, under. Over, under. Over, under. Under. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do about halfway down. So don't let her twist like that. Kind of hold that loop so it doesn't try to bend. You want it to be more of a curve as you pull it through. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and weave for a little bit, and then we'll come back and show you how it's going after we get going. Oh, and you'll drop down in the same hole where the peg is. And you'll go under, and you'll come up here, and then you'll weave in front of this second one in this direction. Okay, I'm just about halfway through this step three, or step four, I'm sorry. And you can just see I'm kind of straightening these as I go. So now I'm ready to go back this direction. Hope this is showing up in the camera. And I'm always kind of pushing these around, and they kind of don't want to stay there, but... So now, we're right on the frame here where we have those short pieces, but you treat them just the same. You go over the one on top, and you go underneath the, the strand that's at the very bottom. And I always work with one hand underneath and one on top, and then I can just kind of feed it down to that hand, then that hand can push it back up. We're working in front of this horizontal. Okay. And then pushes it up. This hand brings it over, pushes it down in between those strands, and then back up. And like I say, we'll go maybe a third of the way across, and then I'll pull it through, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. And as I'm pulling, I want this loop, I'm minding this loop, make sure that it's going to come through the weaving that I've already done without getting twisted. And then as it comes down here, I don't want it to come into a sharp fold, so I kind of, what do you want to say, ease it into a loop around my thumb. So I'm always kind of just going back and adjusting these and keeping them nice and smooth. You don't have to do it, I just... Alright, this is beginning the fifth course of Strand. Fifth out of six courses. We finished our fourth and kind of pushed these together that are pairs and push these together that are pairs. And a pair comes out of the same hole. And you should have a nice kind of a basket weave looking pattern going on. So I just wound, I wove this first part through here to show you how we're gonna begin. Because this isn't a square seat, and a lot of times they aren't. Uh, we're just gonna kinda find a straight path and go through it. You can kinda see where you're gonna end up if you use a ruler. Um, don't ever use acetone to clean your ruler if there's epoxy on it, because all the numbers go away. But you don't really need to measure anything. We're just going to be going 
underneath of our horizontal pairs and over the top of our vertical pairs. And I just pushed this one through here just briefly to show you how that's going to look. We're going to start in the top right hand corner if you're facing the seat with the narrow part behind, um, away, further away from you. Okay, so starting with a fresh piece of cane here, I'll show you how that goes. And then soaking this piece of cane for about 20 or 30 minutes. Kind of look it over for any weak spots. Pull off some of the water. I just kind of run my fingers across it to get some of the water off. I also squirted with a spray bottle this cane to kind of make it a little more pliable. So we're going to drop four inches down through this corner hole and then following to the end of this new piece we're going to go over I just got done saying it and it won't it will work one way and it won't work the other way so if you get started and you're like that's not pulling through at all then it's wrong okay so we go the other way we're going to go under those horizontal ones and now it will pull through very nicely under the horizontal first pair over the first pair that's running vertically now I'm just going to go three or four down and then I'll check if the camera is actually seeing us so we're going down a parallel and then over the, go over that direction one way our diagonal is moving this way and I can see it made a mistake I'm just going to start this over. See, the cane broke. So look for weak spots in your cane. Okay, I'm going to start this video over quick. All right, we're back. Working on our fifth step in the weaving of a caning process. So, sometimes it's <laughs> that last video there, the beginning of this, it's easier to show you how it doesn't work than how it does work, because then you know that what's wrong. It should slide very easily once you begin and we're moving our diagonal that direction. So I'm coming up and then I'm moving over one of the horizontals to the left. Then I'm going down and underneath the pair and then over. I mean moving over and staying on top of. Going underneath the horizontal. Scoot over one more vertical down one. So you're going down, over, down, over, down, over. So we'll just let that play out for a little bit here. So in that last clip, I had a weak spot in my cane, so I just cut it off and started over. If you have a piece break off while you're weaving, just pull it out and drop a new piece in there. Okay, now I'm going to go back over this vertical under a horizontal. Move over one vertical and go down. Go under the horizontal. As you're pulling through, keep it flat. Don't pull up like this. I should have probably said that much earlier in this. I'm making this video for a friend who's building his canoe. And if it happens to end up on YouTube, just be gentle with me because I wasn't planning it for a broader audience. But it does happen to be very handy to be able to show something to somebody rather than just tell them how to do it. So we're just going to finish this and wherever it comes out, it comes out. As we begin to fill in, I will come back and show you how Sometimes you'll drop down into the same hole as you've been in before. Kind of makes like a fish head look. But you'll kind of be able to tell when that's necessary. 
So when I get to a spot like that, we'll revisit this part of step five. But that's how your first cane will look. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in to this corner and then I'll come back when I'm done filling into that corner and fill in on this half. Can't really see this, but I'll just go ahead and make the, make the, the corner here. Gonna drop down through that hole. Hooked around my water bottle. <laughs> usually hold this in my lap to cane because it's just a little easier. I can flip it around and see things, but for the purposes of the video, I clamped it to the bench here, which also works pretty well. Okay, I'm just making, I'm checking underneath to make sure that that loop over there is flat and then we're ready to go again and lay it right alongside of this diagonal. So you went underneath of this parallel, now I'm gonna move one over and go here and over and under and over. It's kind of just like one step up and one step over. One step up, one step over. Okay. I'm gonna do half a dozen or so and then pull it through. If it breaks, just Pull it back out, leave about four inches hanging out of this hole that you ended in, and start a new piece, okay? Usually it doesn't break unless there's a weak spot, and you can usually find that before you get too far. Okay, we'll be back in a bit. All right, just still working on our fifth course here of diagonals. We started in this corner, and I filled in this half, and I'm just starting to fill in this half now with this piece. And I wanted to show you an example of what happens if you do leave your piece of cane in the water for a while, longer than you should or wanted to. You can wait for it to dry out a bit. You'll know if it's a little bit too wet because it squawks at you. So as I continue to weave here, and it only lasts this way for a little while. Like I said, as it dries out, it won't do it anymore. But it makes it a little harder to pull through, and it kind of squawks. And it was in the water for too long because what I usually do is I put one piece in for about 20 minutes and then I start caning and then I put another piece in while I'm caning, but only one, not all the pieces that I anticipate using. And then as soon as I'm done with the piece that is in my hand, I can reach into the water pot and grab a new piece. But what happened is it's taking me a little longer than I thought and so it was sitting there longer than I wanted. Otherwise, what happens is I forget to put any in there at all, and then when I want the next piece, I have to wait a little bit for it to hydrate, so. I'm usually either doing it too soon or too long. So as we work across, we'll fill into that corner, but I wanted to point out a couple of things that can happen as you go through this step. Your holes are starting to be full of cane. Um, and so what I'll a lot of times do when I get to a hole that feels like the cane just won't push down into it because it's fairly full, is I'll take a little object like this with a pointy on it. And you don't want to break the cane that's in the hole, but gently just kind of press the cane. No, I probably can't see that. You kind of just want to press the cane to the edges of the hole. So I kind of just spin it around. And then when I can see daylight down there, I know that I can get through it. And you'll especially notice that on these side pieces where there's just a lot of cane in there. And then continue to weave that through. Oh, I'm too soon. <laughs> I was going to demonstrate that hole. I make a lot of mistakes when I'm recording. I promise I don't make this many when I'm not. So the other thing I'll point out too, um, you'll notice over here, this is what I call a fish head. When I came back, it made more sense for me to put two in this hole 
rather than to try to go drop, drop down a hole. And part of the reason for that is this side is obviously shorter than this side. So I'm trying to kind of balance it out so that as I come to the corner, I kind of end up in the same spot. And you'll be able to tell when it's time to do something like that. So I have a cane in every hole along this edge. And on, since it's a longer edge, I can do that. And then on this shorter edge, I did that fish head here. And then I did it again. Looks like I did it right here. Nope, right here. And that was tight. And then uh, you don't have to fill in this very, very last one. Um, it looks like you should be able to do another one, but there's really no point because as you go the other direction, you're going to you're gonna fill that in, plus you're going to have this binder cane that goes all the way around. So just a couple little things to point out there. Right, so I've finished the fifth course, the fifth step of weaving. All of the diagonals going this way. I just want to show you the back quick. I'm leaving a lot of loose pieces and I'm not going to tie them off until I get done with the sixth course. And a lot of times it's nice to have the loose pieces because if you put one down, like this just happened to me when I was finishing in the corner here, and I had it, this is just a short piece in between these two holes. And I had it here and it looked dumb so I just pulled it out and put it down here. And so you have that option if you leave them untied. You can just pull these, push these back up, pull them out, and move them over one way or the other. And sometimes they just don't look good in a certain hole, so you can move them. So that's the finished fifth course, and we will start on our sixth. All right, we're getting ready to start our sixth and final weave. And we're going to start in the top left corner, if you're standing with the narrowest part of your seat away, um, away from you. And what we're going to do is basically go diagonal, opposite of, we went here last time, now we're going to go this way. And last time we took that diagonal piece and we went on top of our vertical pieces and we wove underneath of the horizontal pieces. And we're going to just do the opposite now. So starting in this corner hole, Drop about four inches down in there. And we're going to take this piece and go, see how it goes under here? We're going to go on top of, and then go under. Go over one, go on top of your vertical, or sorry, your horizontal, under your vertical one. Okay. And it won't weave nice, it won't pull through like if you have it the wrong way, it just won't pull through nice. It'll be all crinkly and it'll resist you and it'll fight you and you'll know, okay, I'm not doing this right. Okay, so it should lay nice and flat like that. I'm just going to go ahead and take that all the way down. Down one and over one with each pass. Down one, going over to the side of this. We'll pull through on that. Mind your loop. Kind of squawking again. Got a phone call. <laughs> so it's soaked for a little bit. And it'll dry out. Here we go. Down and over one. Down and over. It's a real danger to, to miss right here when you start recaining. Um, after you pull through, you can kind of land your end piece in the wrong hole. So just kind of double check yourself that where this one is coming out, that this next piece follows from that location. Mind the loop. We don't want it to bend here. We don't want it to fold right where it's coming out on this side. We don't want it to fold here, and we don't want it to fold here. So I kind of even put a little downward pressure to keep a loop underneath until I'm ready to pull through. And that keeps everything from creasing and 
when it creases, it weakens the strand. And then you end up having to pull it out because something will break. The end of your, your weaving end, this can get pretty ratty, but it doesn't matter because you're not going to use it as part of your chair. It's just serving a purpose right now as something to grab. So I'll let that, that one bend and crease or whatever as I weave with it. But the part that becomes part of the chair, I'm pretty diligent about keeping that one from creasing. Ugh, that happened. Okay. Well, sometimes they just don't lay flat, but... You work with what it is. Things aren't always ideal, right? Let's back it out and make it right. Okay? So now this comes out right into that hole. We'll drop down. Now I'm going to weave, filling in this half of my diagonals first and go back the other direction. No, you know what? I'm wrong. I am going to go this direction first. Now that the holes are full, it's a little bit more work with the pokey thing to open those holes up better. Okay, and there's our first diagonal. Now I'm going to come up through this hole. When you do this, you just want to compress the cane that's in the hole. You don't want to pry real hard because you don't want to cause stress to your frame, but once you compress those fibers a bit, it does give you a little bit more wiggle room through there. Okay. Not sure what's in the camera here, but I think we're good. Now I'm going to go underneath of this right here on the frame first, since that's a little tricky. It's real handy to have a pokey thing nearby. I'm going to get that to lay under there first where it touches the frame and then we'll proceed as before going over the horizontal ones and under the vertical ones right next to our last diagonal. side of my tripod to get a better angle here. And these will make up the first two diagonals of our final weave. And what you'll have is a completed, completely caned very rewarding to see this last one come into place. Kind of have a little Star of David shape there and you get to see what that looks like when it's right. Now if your ends get too beat up, just go ahead and take a scissor and See, like this one's all busted up now, so I'm going to take a little bit of a scissor action on it and trim it so it's easier to poke through. fish head in this top corner. Just because it wants to land there so nicely. Alright. And that is our first two on the diagonal. Alright, we're here on the last few diagonals of the last weave and I just thought I'd navigate these last few on camera. So just have a few left in here and we're working right next to the frame which can be a little tricky. You're going to use this tool quite a bit and if I can't see um, daylight through the bottom of this hole then I'm going to wiggle that in there. Just kind of jiggle it 
don't pry on the frame at all. But we're just compressing the fibers until I can see some light there. And then worst case scenario, if you can't get this piece to come up through that hole, you can do two things. You can trim it a bit so that it's more pointed. And that point will help you a little bit. And now, let's see, I ended the diagonal here, so I'm coming up here. And I can see the light, but I can also feel the tip of my tool down here. So sometimes it's easier just to chase the tool out of the hole with the cane. So I'll just follow it up. So when I pull the tool out, the cane just comes right up behind it. And that is probably one of the tightest holes on this frame right now. So we're through, just like that. And now we're going to go back across under. And again, this is the sixth and final weave. And of course the last step is the binder cane, but we'll wait to put that up after a while because I'm going to let this be an example for someone else and I want them to be able to see how we tie off the back. So we'll show that next, how we tie off the back. If you have trouble getting under here, so you can see how I went with this diagonal underneath of this little triangle to hit that hole. Now I'm going for this hole, and I want to go under this. Just push up underneath a little bit with your finger, and then aim it forward instead of trying to go sideways and it'll scoot under that other one. After you do a few courses, you learn a few of these little tricks. So, go straight down in there. It's a little tight. It's very common on the last course even if I had made my holes the right size, to need to use a little tool to kind of help compress your cane. Get my head here in the way for a second. So I'm going this, this way, but when I want to get this first piece through, it's easier just to aim it down here on the frame where I can grab it, kind of, <laughs> and then pull it straight and continue on. I have a lot of little friends outside singing today. The Oriole earlier, there's a cardinal out there. and flat. Ooh, such a cluster over here. All right. So we don't want to make too much of a curve when we finish, but sometimes if there's a better hole over here this close to the corner, I might use it to see which one has more room. I would like to use this one here. If you're wise, <laughs> you make your holes big enough in the first place. Also at the end, I don't try too hard to come up up and down on the sides as much as I do on the long parts, on the long diagonals. So instead of trying to bring this up again, I'm just going to cut it off. And then sometimes it's hard to see like where these are going to land, so maybe I won't necessarily put it right through the hole. I'll just kind of lay it in next to the previous one weave it, and then figure out which holes look the best on the sides. So when you get into the corner on a trapezoid shape like this, you can kind of figure out, do I want to go here, do I want to go here? 
This one would look better, but it's really full. So you can just kind of make those calls as you're, as you're working. We're going to flip here and I'll show you how we tie off the back. Okay, one quick thing more before we wrap this up. I'll just show you how you start tying off. So I just finished the back of this and um, I'm just rehydrating the loose ends a bit to make sure that they're really pliable when we start tying off. So first I start with the ones that are right next to each other and it's just simply like you would tie your shoelaces, the first part of that anyway. And it's surprising how tight you can actually tie, but you kind of want to push on the knot itself. You don't have to do two knots. Um, I think one is sufficient, but I usually feel like if I can get two in there, all the better. So kind of support the knot as you tighten, and then just snivel off. There is a way to do this, that you um, thread the loose ends back up into the holes. But I figure I have enough trouble getting up in there already. Why make it even more complicated? Okay. So when I get all the way around this, I'll let you see how it looks on the back side. But that's basically it, and I can't imagine how these would come untied. Um, I've had this same canoe seat on my canoe for 11 years this spring and <clears throat> the seats are in still just wonderful shape and they do weather over time. I don't put any finish on the seat, the cane. Um, the seat frames are varnished obviously but the cane itself if somebody wants to advise me on a finish that would be recommended or appropriate for this I'm just doing them here and there as we go but I would be interested in knowing what other people might use. I personally haven't used anything on my seats and haven't any problems with them. So I'll let you take a quick look at those before I shut off. So up here is the canoe that I built several years ago, 11. And these canoe seats, I've had the same seats and the same cane for 11 years. And they get a little grayer over time. Um, but they just have never broken in any of the places that they're woven. This seat has the binder cane on it. Over time, if the seats do sag, which happens if you have a wet swimsuit or it rains in your canoe or whatever, and you notice that they're starting to sag a little bit, just get them wet, flip your canoe upside down on a honey, sunny, hot day, and the seats will tighten right back up again. So. Good luck with your caning. Okay, here, here's a little bit of something else that I might mention to you about how to handle the cane or where to get it. I buy mine from Peerless Rattan, and they're very helpful on the phone. Um, or you just can Google where to buy natural canes. There's also synthetic cane available. For this seat, the cane I used is three millimeters. It comes like this all around, and I keep it on a post. Um, in the other room, I hang it on the wall, coiled. But when I start to use it, I just take out one piece at a time. And if you just kind of pull at the fold and end like that, and shake out the long pieces that you're holding in a bundle, you can pull off just one piece like that and put that in your pot. So three millimeter for this seat. Um, size of cane depends a little bit on how far apart your holes are and how big your holes are in your frame. But I always store this rolled up like this. And with the seat about this size, it takes about 150 feet of cane. And I think um, that's about it for information I can tell you about caning. I used this, this book and a couple others, Making Chair Seats by Ruth Comstock is a really good book. So hope it, the tutorial helps somebody. Thanks for watching.